What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and it's time to build a team for the Enter the Dragon type Pokemon competition. Actually starting uh, tomorrow. This is the 18th. It starts on the 19th. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, if you enter and perform in at least three battles, you get a Snow Warning Amara. Definitely worth getting that. Uh, the rules for this competition, number one, you can only have four Pokemon and you have to use all four in every battle. It's a double style. And you have to have a dragon type. Every team has to have at least one dragon type. Um, and I haven't thought too much about this team. I wanted to really do my process live. Um, but the one thing that I did think about is, since everyone has to have a dragon type, then I want to use an Altaria. Um, Mega Altaria, of course, when it Mega Evolves, then it gets the Altaria Knight. And it gets that nice fairy typing on top of... Um, it's dragon typing, so it's going to be immune to the dragon type moves that people have to carry. Plus, Mega Altaria just has a very highly abusable bulk. Like, a lot of people just don't realize how bulky Altaria is. So, um, that being said, it only has base 80 speed. Uh, since this tournament is allowing with legendary and mythical type Pokemon, you can only have up to two. Of legendary and mythical types, so things like you know, Guaranteed, Dialga, Darkrai, Arceus, you can you can you can use them, but you can only have two on a team. So I have to think about which two I want to use. But a lot of those Pokemon hit base 90 speed, and so since I'm not using um, this is double, so I really want to use Hyper Voice Altaria. To me, that just makes a little bit better sense here because the Pixelate from the Evolve form or the Mega Evolve form. We'll have that nice power boost of the Hyper Voice. Uh, and of course, Draco, Meteor, and the only thing that blocks both of those is Steel, so we'll do Fire Blast as well. And I'm not sure what to put in that last slot right now, but uh, the things, it's, it's going to be important to build teams that can really take powerful hits. Uh, Altaria has the capability to take on things like Groudon or to a lesser extent all, um, Primal Kyogre. But you're really going to have to play around with those EVs to make sure that you can take those hits. So, um, let's, uh, I guess the main thing is that if I can take a, an Ice Beam from a Primal Kyogre, I'm probably doing pretty well in the Special Defense or in the HP uh, department. Make sure you're running things at a level 50, of course, range there, because the damage counts do change slightly in that range. Uh, so, let's see, Primal Kyogre. I am curious. Whoa, it blows. Okay, wait, I was about to say. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, actually, that's interesting. So we see here, and you can run the run these, of course, for your own team, but we see that the water spout is barely a guarantee KO. And then the ice beam from Primal Kyogre only has a 50% chance to one hit KO. So probably adding something like 80 no it's still KO um maybe 104 still can KO maybe 112 no 120 there we go guaranteed to a KO and that's the level that we need just to ensure that we live it granted back we can't one hit KO it but uh with a little bit of especially since I, I like to run wide guard support when things like Primal Kyogre and Primal Groudon are allowed. But now we can ensure that we at least live it and can hit it back. Maybe we can take it out with some priority later on. Um, but this is with that modest and pixelate. And so I probably take that out of my speed. Uh, just because the speed is not really helping me anyway because I'm at base 80 with the Altaria. So we want to go 120, I think I said. Yes, 120 there. We'll do 252 on special attack. And we'll do the remaining 136 in speed, which will let us hit 230, which is actually... Oh, I wish... Well, we are missing out on the speed number there. I like to hit 232, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go modest. And I might actually run Protect in that last slot, um, just because it's nice to hit. Generally, make sure you get the Mega Evolution up. Uh, Altaria just doesn't necessarily have the stopping power, but the bulk is really, really nice. So I'm actually tempted to run Roost in the last slot, or I can run something with Heal Pulse. I'm gonna put Protect there for now. 
just because since it is a fairy type it will kind of trigger a lot of uh, the well hmm this is interesting too a bulky special sweeper if I have hmm okay I'll come back to that the secondary Pokemon says Altaria is a fairy and a dragon type a dark type would go well here just because fairy kind of takes on dark pretty well so that's the since I don't think I'm gonna have room to build a fire water grass core to support Pokemon team um, I could run something like Bisharp the only I could, Arceus dark is an idea or Darkrai I've never used a Darkrai that would be interesting um, if I ran a Darkrai uh, probably would go life orb I do have a dark I have one Darkrai on my game it actually has a hasty nature if I recall correctly unfortunately for that but you know that's okay at least it has a plus speed nature generally I'll have to see what speed at that specific Darkrai hits but of course with Darkrai you want to use Dark Void because it is doubles and Dark Void is awesome and overpowered and that's why they specifically banned it from that one year in VC when everyone was using Smeargle with Dark Void very annoying uh, Dark Pulse of course for stab and Sludge Bomb because Sludge Bomb all right that's not a move that we necessarily have just because it's I want to hit fairies I want separate coverage from Altaria right now Altaria covers fairy dragon and fire and so now I have dark and poison and in that last slot um, hmm, I could put focus blast although I am very afraid of missing focus blast especially in doubles one miss could be really unfortunate honestly and I don't think I have a good hidden power on my specific dark cry I don't want to use substitute with life orb uh, hmm. so maybe in that last slot maybe just a support option I don't know let me go look at the the move set for dark crab here and boom just like that dark cry nicely gets access to ice beam so I think that's what I'm going to go with for now uh, again just for coverage I'm curious how much a dark cry's ice beam does to a mega Rayquaza <clears throat> just because that might be a situation I encounter uh, dark cry of course should be able to outspeed mega Rayquaza um, and definitely outspeeds regular Rayquaza but I imagine that it would do about 70 percent uh, let's see here. 60 per no wait no it doesn't even have it up there Gosh, wow the dark pulse does a good amount though go for that flinch chance ice beam though will do oh okay yeah 70 to 80 percent so with a little bit of prior damage I can definitely take it out unfortunately everything that Rayquaza does back will severely maim Darkrai but Darkrai should be just about faster than any Mega Rayquaza because he hits 125 speed versus Rayquaza's 115 speed so I'm gonna go ahead and go with that for right now that gives me two team members left uh, I don't want to use anything that I've used before, so unfortunately Aegislash is going to be out of the question here. Um, as far as other wide guard users... Hmm... Other wide guard users, let's see, there's going to be things like... Hariyama, uh, Hitmon... Oh, I really like Hitmontop. Hitmontop is my favorite fighting type. So we're going to go ahead and go for Hitmontop here. Of course, utilizing M Intimidate. I really like this too because now it gives me Fairy, Dark, and Fighting. Um, that's not exactly circuitous because fairy is good against both of them but since the the fighting is also good here it gives me a completely different offensive presence and now I don't have to run focus blast on dark Cry, which I really like uh, maybe just a citrus berry here and I'm gonna need to play around with the damage calcs there a little bit I don't like running close combat on him on top especially uh, back in black and white VGC a lot of people were running close combat because you could use a fighting gem back then but even then I didn't like using that because it would lower Hitmontop's defenses and that's the main reason to use Hitmontop over Hariyama or Scrappy it's kind of a mixture of both um, and they're all popular for different reasons but Hitmontop gets its Scrappy's Intimidate and Fake Out while also getting Hariyama's Wide and Quick Guard um, so while it is neither as bulky as either uh, and I can, I'll just bring them up really fast here uh, Hariyama and Scrafty, just so you, you can compare the stats there and see what I'm talking about. But we can see that Scrafty, of course, 
has base 65 HP but nice 115 in both defenses, not that fast at all. Hariyama has way more HP, relatively mediocre defenses and even slower. Hitmontop is faster than either of them, uh, very mediocre HP but then it kind of has the balanced defenses and so since I'm much more of a balanced player, I like um, having those balanced uh, defenses overall. So I'm going to go with Hitmontop for now for sure. And definitely, we're, we're using him on top specifically for a wide guard and fake out, so those are those have to be there. And I want a fighting type move, but I don't want close combat, so that leaves me with drain punch, uh, low sweep, low kick. Um, I don't want to use triple kick. Uh, I don't want to use close combat. Um, low kick is sounding nice because so many Uber Pokemon are very heavy. Um, I don't know why I just put up my toolbar like that. So we're going to put low kick here. But I need to go see how hard him on top can hit with low kick without that much of an investment. Uh, doubles utility, I guess. I don't know. Level 50. So the, the set that comes up has a kind of a weird spread. I'm not really sure what these spreads live. But for example, we're just going to go ahead and go with uh, Primal Grudon. We'll go with the offensive Primal Greed on here. Just for the worst case scenario. And we see that the overheat from Grudon in the sun is not a one-hit KO with 60 special defense and 252. So that's good. Oh, he's still using close combat, so we need to switch that to low kick, because I would not be using close combat. Low kick against something as heavy as a primal Grudon will probably have around 120 base power, I'd imagine. Uh because of course the, the power of low kick increases based on the weight of the Pokemon. So that is horrendously low damage though. Hmm. That is just kind of sad really. Okay, something else that might be a little bit more easy to deal with. We'll do Mega Kangaskhan because I still expect to see that, honestly. And we'll do level 50 here once again. There, see, low kick there is almost a one hit KO. That is great. And there's I mean, outside of return, there's nothing that Kangashkan can really do in, re in, in retaliation there. So, uh, we'll also take a look at Terrakian, just because you might see him. And low kick against the Terrakian. Oh, it is a one-hit KO. Perfect. Well, can I lower this some? Since it's... Oops, I'm raising it. I want to lower this. Okay, there we go. And I want to leave it a little bit higher there just to catch on to some track here and are built a little bit more bulky just in case they aren't running focus sash uh, which allows me to invest a little bit more in my special defense let's see how well I can take attacks from something like primal Kyogre um, wow let's definitely change that to level 50 okay so there's no way I'm living a water spot apparently <laughs> that's entertaining but I'm not really concerned with Water Spot or Origin Pulse because I would obviously use Wide Guard against those. Um, I can put some of that investment there. That was at 136, and now it's at 104. So that allows me to put a little bit more over here to ensure that Thunder and Ice Beam are taken pretty decently. But um, I think that's where I need to be at. Right? Yeah, I think so. Um, but yeah. What else? What else is there? Uh, if I have to take on the Alga, that'll be a good one to know about. This is the calm one. I think if I if I fought it, it would probably be a more offensive thing using that Adamant Orb. I'd say. So we can see how much Low Kick does to him as well. Low Kick does an astounding amount of damage to him. Oh, but Draco Meteor from him is a one-hit KO. That's a little sad to see. Not not, not all the time, but. Hmm. If I if I predict Draco Meteor, I could of course that's that's tough though because if I switch it in, and uh, he uses Flash Cannon, that would suck. But I have a chance of living it at least. Um, okay, it's just tough to think of all these powerful attacks in this manner because, of course, uh, you just don't typically face these Pokemon in battle like this. A lot of times they're banned, so when you actually have to take them on to. Um, I take them all into consideration. There's a lot to consider. So, in this last slot, I'm going to go ahead and run Helping Hand. 
I think that uh, Hitmontop paired with either one of these two actually is not only a good pairing, but then he can protect them with Y Guard and help them out with Helping Hand. Uh, Darkrai outspeeds a lot of things, so if I can use Helping Hand, for example, that'll help me get that one hit KO onto Mega Rayquaza. Uh, so 50. I think it will at least. I'm assuming it will. If I just use Helping Hand. But we have to be careful of Protect, of course. So, Helping Hand and. High speed. This needs to be a level 50, otherwise I'm going to be disappointed in my damage counts. Yeah, there we go. With the helping hand, it helps me get that one hit KO. So, I definitely am going to run helping hand right there. We're just doing 104 here. We're doing 60 here. And we're doing 90, 92 right here. Alrighty. And of course, an adamant nature. And I'm curious if I should have run something more defensive. But just being able to hit those really, really heavy legendaries with low kick is very entertaining with him on top. Uh, which leaves me with one slot. And so, so far I have Fighting Dark, Poison, Fairy, Dragon, and Fire coverage. So, there's a helicopter outside. That's not really helping me. I mean, I guess I'm missing flying coverage since the helicopter wants to chime in. But other than that... Let's see, flying coverage would be nice. Water coverage, or grass would be preferred. If I could figure out a way to fit grass down in here, that would give me a really nice way to hit Primal Kyogre. Um, as far, I do get another mythical Pokemon, so I could run something like Celebi. Um, I don't think there's any way Celebi is taking a hit from a Primal Kyogre. I do have a modest Celebi, I don't have a timid one. Uh, what else do I have? I have an Arceus that I could use. Um... Hmm. If I wanted to, I could bring back that uh, Arceus that I used several years ago with the Zap Plate to fool people into thinking that it was a normal form and use Calm Mind, Spatial Rend, uh, Thunderbolt, and Recover. That set became extremely hard to take down. I don't like the weakness to Earthquake, but the same token with Y Guard and Hitmontop, I'm not really worried about Earthquake. Um. I could also utilize a Mewtwo, although I wouldn't have access to Mega Mewtwo, but that would give me a Dark Psychic um, Fighting Core, which gives me a lot of coverage. I don't think Mewtwo has any way. Just regular Mewtwo. Good old, good old regular Mewtwo. I don't think Mewtwo has a way to one-hit KO any of the other legendaries, though, is the thing. Because I am quite... Right now I don't have a really strong way to hit Primal Kyogre or Primal Grudon. Uh, so, if I have Mewtwo use Grass Knot, how much damage does that do? Let us see. Grass Knot is a possible one hit KO. That is astounding. Wait, Psystrock gets the same damage as... Oh yeah, it's hitting the physical offense. That makes sense. Okay, so I don't really I don't really need to use Grass Knot. Although Psystrike won't do the same thing against Primal Grudon though, because it'll be hitting Grudon's physical defense, which he is selling with. So in that case, okay, in that one case, Grass Knot is better, but he hits me back and one hit KOs me with Overheat or Precipice Blades. So not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is this is quite tough. I could run a Focus Sash on Darkrai and a Life Orb on Mewtwo. Uh, of course, Mewtwo outspeeds Mega Rayquaza as well. Hmm. What other Pokemon are there to worry about, though? Because Evil Tall could Sucker Punch Mewtwo in the face very easily, and I don't have Quick Guard on him on top, so that is a concern. Uh, Xerneas using Geomancy. I don't think people will necessarily expect Sludge Bomb. In fact, they'd probably just try to attack it right away. In fact, I have a very fairy weak team right now. I don't like that. This is weak to fairy, this is weak to fairy, this is weak to fairy. Whatever my last Pokemon is, it cannot be weak to fairy. Um, preferably, it needs to be resistant to fairy. Uh, I could run Steel-type Arceus. I could run Dialga. I could run Genesect. We could run Genesect. Genesect only hits 99 base speed though, I'm pretty sure. Uh, which is unfortunate. 
Yeah, he does. He only has 99 base speed, so he won't be able to outspeed things like Mega Rayquaza. Hmm. Well, let's just look at some damage calcs really fast for Genesex attacks here. Wow, Genesex Explosion does a ton of damage to Primal Grudon. That's unexpected. Uh, what about against... Because Genesex can get a lot of really good coverage, but it's, it's questionable whether or not that I want... He's really good in singles, but I don't know in doubles, because you can't even control where he, where he gets the download boost from. Oh, I still have Helping Hand on, I just realized that. There we go. Hmm. I really like the idea of running Mewtwo. I could see... Okay, let's see Deoxys attack form. Yeah, I'm thinking the mixed attacking form. Um. Wow, Psycho Boost can one a KO? Good gravy. That's impressive. Uh, what about his... Attack versus Primal Kyogre. I really like using Primal Kyogre and Primal Grudon as benchmarks just because their defense and special defense are so high. Uh, most other legendary Pokemon don't get to those points. Uh, so here, first of all, this is ridiculous because <laughs> I, I haven't changed the the level over yet. But yeah, let's have it for those Shedinja like defenses. Okay, so Psycho Boost is still up there. Can he? Not a guarantee one hit KO even with Helping Hand. What if I use Grass Knot with... Because uh, I won't need Ice Beam since I have it on Darkrai. So we'll go Grass Knot and we'll see that we see that, that does 80 and with the Helping Hand that should, that does, that is a guaranteed KO. So that's interesting. I don't see Kyogre running um, Protect very often. So uh, I wouldn't use Superpower either. I would likely use Extreme Speed just because it's nice to have priority. And I could pick some things off. Uh, hmm. And I could put I could put protect on Deoxys attack form, just because he's so incredibly threatening. Um, I do need to see. Let's see, Mega Rayquaza. How much does that Ice Beam do? That is a question. Okay, so I don't have Ice Beam on the set. That's fine. I don't really need Ice Beam on this set though, just because I have it on Darkrai. But, you know, still gonna check. Okay, wow, so his does more than Darkrai, of course. But since we're investing some in attack and some in special attack... Hmm... Psycho Boost does so much damage. Ah, oh, that's, that's amazing. Um, I'm really tempted to put the White Herb onto Deoxys attack form. If I get the opportunity to use two Psycho Boost, that could be devastating. I hate that Psycho Boost does not have perfect accuracy. But that move would be far too good if it did have perfect accuracy. So I'm actually highly considering Deoxys attack form because he can actually bypass Circuit Punch with extreme speed. So that is nice. Um, I can't hit Evil Tall with any of his moves. Hmm, it's actually not a terrible idea to go ahead and put Ice Beam on Deoxys attack. Uh, hmm. This is interesting. Because so many Uber's Pokemon are weak to Ice Beam because there are just a lot of Dragon types. So, not a terrible idea. I don't have any Earth, I don't have any ground coverage on this team, I don't have any rock coverage. Which those are very predictable as they are. I could put a Groot on this team to fix that issue. This is tough. Um, I think I'm going to go with Deoxys just because he's my favorite Legendary. Uh, which, crap, that means I need to go catch my Deoxys in-game. Um, Yeah, I, that this could be interesting with a white herb. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I feel like that's a bad idea, but I want to try it anyway. If I had something to redirect attacks, that would be perfect. But I only get four Pokemon. That's what's killing me here. Um, are there any other things that are really bulky that I'm forgetting about that people like to use in doubles? I mean, I am curious if a Deoxys mix attacker hits something like a Togekiss in doubles with wow okay so that could be bad well maybe I don't want to use Deoxys it seems like it's too frail to really be good in doubles hmm 
Okay, let's see for that same thing how Mewtwo does against it. And then we can see kind of how much damage we're working with here. How much does your Ice Beam do need to? No, I should. Oh, yeah. Because if I have Darkrai out there, I would probably just Dark Void. Icy Beam. Oh, man, that is not great damage. Man, took a kiss your bulky. So I can 2-hit KO it, so that's nice at least. Oh, uh, man. I don't know what to do with this last slot. Uh, okay, let's go back to the original idea. Where I wanted a Fairy Resist. What about Arceus Steel? That would give me an additional ground, fire, fighting type weakness. Which none of my other Pokemon share. That's not too bad. Um, it would resist the Primal Kyogre's all. It would resist Primal Kyogre's entire set, basically. Or at least be neutral to it. How much damage does Dialga do back to them, though? Just the offensive. I don't want to use choice specs, I don't think. I'd, I'd, I'd rather like an Adamant Orb, as a matter of fact. And... Okay, so that is still a level 100. I keep forgetting that. I hope you guys don't forget to do that. Make sure you change the levels there. Wow, Togekiss can even live a Flash Cannon from Diago with an Adamant Orb. That's silly. Uh, that does give me another Dragon type, but it doesn't give me a Dragon type that's weak to Fairy. So I'm still in that same neutral position. Mm. But it would give me a Steel type attack. Um, and I could have run Earth Power on it instead of Fire Blast. How much does his Earth Power do to Primal Grudon, is the question. And it does nothing because we are still level 100. Alrighty, so that is impressive damage, I would say. Um, overall, Precipice Blades, even if I send out Hitmontop alongside it, let's see what happens at minus one. Okay, so I have a chance of living at minus one anyway. But if Hitmontop is out there, then we're wide guarding. We're wide guarding all day. That overheat still does way too much damage, because there's no special attack investment on this set, and it still does that much damage. That's silly. Um, huh. So yeah, Dialga. Maybe. Maybe indeed. So I'm going to go ahead and slash in Dialga for right now. This is with the Adamant Orb. And of course, with Flash Cannon. Hmm, should I use Draco Meteor? I really... I guess I might as well because his doubles, everything goes faster. It's just important to play conservatively with that move, I suppose. Uh, Earth Power. And then I'll go ahead and put Thunderbolt on there, just in case, because I don't have electricity anywhere else on this team so far. And... It still has the same speed as... I just don't see the point in investing in speed when everything has base 90 speed. And I don't think my Dialga has perfect uh, speed. So I'll need to go catch my Dialga too, basically. But we're coming up on 30 minutes in this video here. Um, I, I'll figure that EV sprite out later there. Maybe play with a few more numbers. I hope you found this video interesting. Tentatively, this is the team I'm going to see I'm going to go with. So we have uh, Mega Altaria. Darkrai, we're going to go ahead and give him the life orb there just to give him a little bit more oomph to these attacks probably will be using dark void a lot though hit and i have a hasty nature just because that's the only dark ride that i have uh hit him on top mainly just for a wide guard and intimidate support fake out will be really really nice just to stall while either i hit something with one of my other pokemon and of course i can switch it in and out depending i have two nice immunities here to psychic and also to poison and i can switch this in of course, against Kyogre as well. So if I need to play with that Intimidate Summon, it gives me that option. And then Dialga will not only give me uh, a way to hit Fairy types, because right now I completely lack that, but just general coverage between Earth Power and Thunderbolt as well, because I have Ice Beam and Sludge Bomb on Darkrai, I have Fire Blast on Altaria, Him on top is just there to hit things with Low Kick. Um, otherwise, it will be supporting everyone. So, we have options. I'm okay with this team. It is time for the Enter the Dragon type competition starting tomorrow. And let's hope I can get some live narrated battles this time instead of everything post-narrated. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye, guys.